Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is release day for the November Stitchy and Quilty House of the Month. So I can't believe the December house is already releasing. This year of houses has flown by and I hope you have all enjoyed them as much as I have. Today, like I said, is release day for the December house of the month and it is also release day for the bundle of all the houses. So all year long I've been releasing the houses individually but once they're all released, then I go ahead and bundle them together to make it a little bit easier for you guys. So as of today, you can get both the Stitchy and the Quilty houses in one big bundle. They will be available on my website and they're a little bit less expensive than buying them individually as well. And they are available in print and PDF. If you buy the houses individually, they are just available in PDF. So hopefully all that makes sense. Just head over to my website. You can type in house of the month and all of your options should pop up for you. Or if you know you're interested in the bundle, type in house of the month bundle and those should pull up for you as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in and see what the December house looks like. I'm going to start off with the Stitchy house. This one is so adorable. I sort of took our January house and made it a little bit more cottagey and cozy. And of course I added all kinds of fun Christmas details on that. So we've got little pine trees on the sides. They've got some red berries on them. We have an adorable little holiday quilt off to the side here. We've got candy canes. We have a cozy little cabin with some holly hanging all over. We've got a wreath and then there's holly and berries all over the window. Windows. It is so cute. And then of course we've got another little candy cane hanging down here off the edge. And then you know I was going to have to do some red gingham for my background fabric. Now I am holding this up because if you have seen my podcast, you'll know that the washers that I purchased somewhere mid-year, I think it stopped working in October. Um, I ran out of washers and I just purchased some more and I wasn't paying attention. And I'm pretty sure the ones that I purchased were actually not magnetic. So my houses have not been sticking. This is what the washers look like. And once I Get the right ones I will put them this is my November house so I have to pull those off and get those put on and then I will add them to my December house and then of course I have the magnets on my little paddle board here and um, you know then it can just sit on there and I can swap them out <laughs> each month so I need to pay a little bit better of attention and a word of a wise to you guys to make sure you're purchasing material that is magnetic and what I'm actually gonna do is just take my magnets to Home Depot and then I'm just gonna make sure in the store that they're magnetic and then I don't have to worry about it so but anyway here is the little house. I did do a red gingham. This is a Lori Holt print, I believe. This was also from my stash. And I just like to hang on to larger pieces like this. I keep them all over here in my fabric drawers. And then when I need a piece for my cross stitch, I can just go through and pull out one that is just, it just has to be big enough to fit around this piece. And then here is the board that you've all seen all year long. This is the one that I'm putting all my houses on. It was from Hobby Lobby and I believe these are sold out now. Uh, these were, um, I think I got this sometime in um, spring of last year maybe. So um, I, as far as I know, they don't have these anymore, but this little area right here is about five by seven. So if you can find something like that, that would be perfect um, to mount your little houses on. It fits on there nicely. And then of course you can mount them however you want, but I did do mine on two pieces of sticky board. So I've got the piece for my accent fabric and then I've got the piece for my cross stitch. And then I added this little rick rack around the outside edge. And all of the information for how I finished these is in the pattern. And I do have a Vlogmas video from last year. I think it was part three. And I wanna say it was around the 12 minute, 12.05 time mark where I show how I finish these. So if you want to see how I finish these pieces, you can definitely head over and check that out. But here's the December house. It is so cute and cozy. And I had so much fun stitching this. And if I could give you guys a little bit of advice for for whatever reason, I waited till the very end to stitch the red. I did all the other colors and then red was the last one and I was so happy as I was stitching this because the red just adds that extra little touch to the cross stitch and it was so cute to see all of those little pieces that I had stitched sort of come alive with that extra little pop of red. So it was so much fun. So if you have it in you, or if you're remembering, do the red last. I think you'll agree with me. It made the cross stitch so much more fun. And then if you're curious, here is the December Stitchy truck from last year. We've got our cute little truck there and an adorable tree hanging out in the back. We've got a little tree on 
the side of the truck and then some fun little ornaments here as well. So this one was really fun and I know a lot of you guys are stitching the trucks and making the trucky trucky quilts, vintage truck quilts this year. I love seeing them. So make sure to tag me in your social media posts so that I can see them. And if you're okay with it, I love to share them with my audience as well because that way you guys can all see what everyone is making. So here's the little December stitchy truck. So here it is. December house of the month and then let's go ahead and take a look at the quilty version. So I used my Sweetwater fabric for this because I like to pull from my scraps whenever I'm doing these houses. The background you need about a half a yard or so, sometimes less of fabric, but for the houses, a lot of the pieces are smaller and you can really dig in your stash. So all the pieces I used on this were from my Sweetwater Christmas stash. So here, is the December house. Look at how cute that is. We've got a wreath there on top above the door. We have some cute little red gingham window trim coverings right there. And then we have the uh, candy canes on the side of the house. Those are so much fun. They are small, little half square triangles. So I do recommend using some Mary Ellen's Best Press or pre-starching your fabric before working on those pieces, just because they're small and I'll help keep everything nice and lined up doing it that way. Um, but you can, of course, just be careful when you're pressing as well. And then here's our December writing on the bottom. And I went ahead and used the green because I had so much red on there with that red roof. Um, so I just thought that looked really cute. And if I can get the whole thing, there we go, in the frame for you. Of course, I've got a couple little chimneys up here on top. And then for the backing, I have had this print in my stash for kind of a while. This was from Holly's Tree Farm from Sweetwater. And it's this, this um, kind of label print. It's got sort of a tan, beige background, and then it has all these fun little labels on there. And so that's what I decided to use for my backing because I had almost exactly the right amount left over. And then I have my Ever Emblem personalized label on here. This is from Ever Emblem on Etsy. And these are the just fold them in half and stick them in your binding labels. I love those for these small projects. And then the binding for this project is a red snowflake print. And I think it was Holiday Essentials. Um, it was, I think, Stacy Itsu for Moda, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and it was, again, an older print from my stash. So I really try and kind of stash dive for these because they're perfect to use for those little bits that you have saved up. And then for the quilting on this, I went ahead and did a really fun quilting. I did some stars. You can see a star up there in the corner. And then I also added some holly leaves every now and then. So I have stars, swirls, and holly leaves. And let me see if I can find one of the holly leaves. Um, and then I don't know if you can see it, but there's kind of a holly leaf right here. <laughs> and I think I actually did this same pattern on my Christmas, I think Franny's Tree Farm from last year is where I started this design and I love it. It's so much fun to do. And I just did that all over. I did free motion this on my long arm and I just kind of have fun with it. And I just put whatever design I feel like putting wherever I feel like putting it. And there's no rules. I just have fun and try not to get myself in a position where I'm stuck. But if I do, it's okay. I just kind of do my best to get out of there and keep on going. So the backing for this is the Lori Holt gray cross print. It's just got those teeny tiny little gray crosses on it. I think it adds a little bit something extra than just a plain white. And they almost just look like maybe little snowflakes or something. So I thought that would be a really cute background. But here is our December quilty house. Let's see if we can hold up the stitchy house next to it. This is always a trick. So here's the quilty house and the stitchy house together. So very, very cute. And then if you're curious, I thought it'd be fun to share the December truck from last year. So this one was super cute. These are my little vintage trucks and I have a gift and a tree hanging out in the back of the truck there. Very cute. And I actually used that same backing on the back of this one as well. So there's the December truck, quilty truck. And I think I mentioned in the November video, but now that we're done with our house of the months, I thought I would share with you that we are going to be doing pillow of the month next year. The quilty version will be 20 by 20 finished pillow tops. And so if you want to just buy one puffy 22 by 22 or 20 by 20 pillow insert, that will be perfect. We're going to reuse that pillow insert for each month when we swap out our pillow cover. 
For the stitchy version, you're gonna have a couple options. You can either finish them individually like we are these, or there will also be an option in the very first pattern that comes out, I will have borders on them, and you can actually stitch them all together and then make those into like a cross stitch pillow if you want, or you could even frame it. So you're gonna have a couple options with the cross stitch version next year. Um, they will be seasonal. I guess I could kind of say that. They will all be different though. They're not gonna be all trucks or all houses. Um, I feel like we've kind of been there and done that, so I wanted to just do something a little bit different for next year. So stay tuned, information for all of that will be coming soon. But in the meantime, that is it for today's release for the December Quilty and Stitchy House of the Month. I hope you love them. Leave me a comment below letting me know which of your houses was the favorite for this year. I'm curious to see what you guys think. I actually love them all and each time I make a new one, I'm excited to see um, that new house come to life. So I thought it was a lot of fun and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Again, you can get the bundles in my shop. I will make sure to link those below. That's gonna be it for today today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this series and I will see you in the next video. I have today, today, like I said, these are so hard to hold up. Did I do a holly leaves or did I just do swirls and stars? Maybe I just said swirls and stars. Did I? Oh no, there's a holly leaf. And they almost look like little, you know, maybe like little snow uh, drops or some snowflakes. 